Good afternoon, everyone, family and friends, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us. This is the Tabernacle Community Church. Um, I just want to give a small message today. I want to jump in and just uh, let it be a blessing to you and your family and friends. And uh, if you can, um, while I'm recording this and giving you this message, you know, I just ask you to please share it. You know, so we can all practice of sharing and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, the commandments, you know, that Jesus has told us to do before he left this earth. Um, share it, like it, you know, and if you need any prayers or prayer requests or any questions, ask, uh, go ahead and message us on there or just get on the on the on the website, on the Facebook Tabernacle Community Church of Corpus Christi and message us okay or a phone call or just a phone call away all right that's what we're here for to help you and to minister to you in the name of jesus let's say a little prayer thank you god for uh, the many blessings you have bestowed upon us we praise your name and we lift up your holy name upon high god uh, we thank you for everything you have bestowed upon us such as health and um and love understanding you know um sharing our kindness and everything else with others that uh, we can let our light shine before others so people can glorify your holy name <clears throat> thank you for answering our prayers god our prayer requests and uh, meeting our needs every single day giving us uh, the strength that we need spiritually and physically as well so we just praise you and thank you to the utmost Thank you, God, for your great love. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Yeshua, amen. All right, everybody, thank you again for joining. Um, I'm just going to shoot from the hip, all right? I had written something down, but it's not going to come through, okay? But uh, we're going to see what the Holy Spirit leads and what he's going to teach us. I yeah, put something upon my heart all week and uh and then i shared it with my wife my wife was able to share it underneath the page here on facebook with tabernacle and um she had mentioned about the gift of god right so we were discussing this together about the gift of god the greatest gift in the whole world that has been recorded and that has ever been was the gift of jesus christ the gift of eternal life because what is life is jesus jesus says himself that he is the way the truth and the life right and no one comes unto the father but by him so if we, we want eternal life if we want to be in heaven one day to meet god our father to see our creator we go through jesus christ because he is our mediator and he was the gift that was given at that time, at that point in time in the New Testament. When it, it changed the whole world. The whole world was changed because of this. And that that's what split time in half. According to AC and BC right on the timeline. Because it was so significant. And to this day and, and to his coming in the future when he comes to pick up the saints, the bride, the church. But... Um, Jesus Christ is the gift. Many people today do not really realize where, where in this time when they fall upon, you know, like what their life is about, or they don't understand what the gift is, or they don't even understand about that Bible verse, John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So they receive this verse, believing in this verse, and they receive the gift. But when they receive the gift, they never tend to go on forward. They don't tend to open up the gift. Some of us, such as I in the past, because I grew up in church, grew up in religion growing up knowing the verses quoting the verses by chapters i was able to quote verses and i even went to christian school but i never got to know 
what the gift was about. I never opened the gift and practiced and ate of the gift of Jesus Christ. So some of us, like I said, receive the gift. Some of us put the gift up in the shelf and forget about it and never grow, never grow fruit on their tree, never get to bud the fruit. The fruit doesn't get to get shared, which is the the word of God doesn't get shared to others or to family or to our friends or to our enemies because we never open that gift. And some of us just hang on to the gift like, hey, I got Jesus Christ. I got the gift. But they never open the gift. Jesus says in the New Testament that if you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, that you will have eternal life. That is to live in Christ. When you practice and keep his commandments and not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word to take action, to live it. In other words, it's a works, right? Of faith. If you have that faith, then it shows works. That's the, the product of becoming a new creature in Jesus Christ. A person that has received the gift and has opened the gift and get to you know, bring Jesus into their lives to have Jesus as the rock of their salvation, of their foundation, Jesus Christ in their homes, Jesus Christ in their lives of every second, every hour, every day for the rest of their lives. So that is the seed that when you take it, you receive the seed and then it takes root and takes ground and then it buds producing fruit that is the person that has received the gift and opened up the gift so we want to find ourselves search the scriptures ask questions you know and when there's a knock on the door as jesus says i behold i stand at the door and knock according to revelations 320 and if you open up that door that jesus is knocking and you get to go in the door and out the door you know, seeking pastor, and you can sup with him, and Jesus will sup with you. And then we get to receive the riches and glory in Jesus Christ. Everything that he has planned and purposed for you, and you get to go on, you know, seeking righteousness and seeking and furthering his kingdom, and then everything else is added unto you. Without even praying, Jesus doesn't even say that you have to pray about it, because he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you desire the things of the Lord, if you desire not the things of the world, and you put all your energy and all your strength and all your mind, all your heart upon Christ, you will be blessed by the Lord. He will take care of you. He is our father. A father does not abandon his child a father does not overlook him or put him to the side no a father is there always for him a father will hang on to his child his uh his daughter his son always and always will give him the desires of his heart and we you have the mind of christ in you and uh, you put on jesus christ in your life then you, your desires will be the will of the Father. Because you know how I know that? Because Jesus himself said when he was here, the Son of God, Jesus Christ was here on earth. He always went for the will of the Father. Not his will, but God's will, the Father's will to be done. So we, as having the Comforter, the Holy Ghost within us, you know, that came from Jesus Christ, that should be our will to do the will of the Father. The desires to further the kingdom, seeking righteousness in the Lord, right? That we can win souls, that we can reach people so they can come to repentance and to know God, to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, to receive truth, to receive what they've been searching for and searching things that they don't even know what they're looking for, that we can bring it to them because we are the light and the salt of the earth and we can show light into that darkness where they are blind because the 
minister and the god of this world is satan and he transforms himself into light himself that's why people are confused about religions about churches about bibles about what is truth right that was a great question asked in the new testament right uh, that this king said uh, what is truth the truth is jesus christ Remember that verse that says, and the truth shall set you free. It's not just saying the truth, not lying about it. No, the truth, which is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. That is what's going to set you free from the bondage of sin. If uh, you're suffering in this world at this time, as many of us are, but if you're a saint of Jesus Christ, you should have the faith to trust in the Lord and not lean into your own understanding. Trust in him. As Peter came off the boat, he trusted in the Lord and he got to break the laws, the laws of buoyancy, right? Man has many laws in this world, but when you serve Christ and when God's will needs to be done, those laws can be broken. That's why Peter was able to walk on water because he trusted on the Lord. But once you start trusting or leaning to your own understanding, like this cannot be, I cannot be walking on water. How can I be doing this? And this is uh, impossible. This is crazy. And then you start listening to the things of the world. That's when Peter started looking to the right, to the left, and then he started sinking. But guess what? Because we're children of the Lord and nobody can take us away from the hand of the Father. No one can open up his hand and take, take us away, his children. Jesus was there and was able to save Peter and bring him back up and back to the boat in safety. So that is us, you know, you know, we have a a promise from God that that he will never let go of our love and no one will be able to break that love between us. If that is if you have accepted the Lord and trusted in God. And all it takes is according to like in Romans 10, 9 through 13, if you read those verses, one must believe that Jesus existed. And that he was a son of God and that he came down as man to take on the whole sin of the world and to die in all those sins that were upon him to take it upon himself that no man will ever have to die because of sin if we would only believe that that Jesus Christ was Lord and that Jesus rose in three days and has risen and is alive today sitting on the right hand of the Father and if we confess that, confess our sins, He is able and just to forgive us of all sins that we have ever committed. No matter what you've done in the past, no matter how much you think or what somebody has told you that you cannot be forgiven, Jesus will forgive you. Trust in the Lord. Believe in the Word of God. We have the Word of God before us today. Read the Word. Search it. Search it. You thinking you have salvation? Uh, search the word, read it, see what it has to say. Romans 10, 9 through 13, if you read it. Okay? Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Romans 3, 23, Romans 6, 23. And uh, for the wages of sin is death, right? So if you have sin, death will come to you. I'm not talking about the death on this earth, but eternal death in the lake of fire and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God there's no one that has not sinned everyone in this earth that has been born and has come again has sinned Jesus was the only one that was pure nothing was found wrong on him he committed no sin that, 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 that's why he was able to die on the cross as the last sacrificial lamb of God that was pure and innocent. And that blood that he shed on that cross is able to wipe away our sins completely. White as snow, a clean slate. So accept him today. Today is a day of salvation. Today is your chance to receive him and believe that you will have eternal life and that your name can be written in the book of life and that no one will be able to, to blot it out. And of course, we need to remain in serving Christ for the rest of our lives. 
And that's going to be our desire, our want. When we get born again, when we're changed into a new creature, is to serve Him for the rest of our lives. If you are truly repentant, if you truly believe and have that faith. And if you don't have that faith, then you most likely, that seed that was planted in you will dry up or will be taken away by the things of the world. But we want to have and practice it and believe on Jesus Christ. So get with us. Text us if you have any questions. Uh, it's your chance to receive the Lord today. All you got to say is a small prayer. Pray to the Lord. Jesus is our mediator so we can talk to the Father. Ask God to forgive you for what you have done today and for the past since you've been born. And he will forgive you of everything. And from then on, at that point, in that moment, you will be safe. And you will become a new creature. And everything will be new. And you will start your life anew. The Lord uh, Jesus Christ will send you the Comforter, the Holy Ghost within you. To work with you, to help you to grow, to teach you the things of life, the things of this Holy Word. To reveal to you the mysteries of this Holy Word. That's why we can't understand the bible when growing up and you're trying to read it and trying to hear it but it's confusing because we don't have the holy ghost inside us we're not a new creature in christ but the people who do understand this holy word is for his children that's why we can understand it those who are born again in jesus christ and who have been forgiven and transformed into a new creature so like i said The gift is there. It's free. All you got to do is receive it. Have the faith and believe. And uh, say your prayer to the Lord. Receive Jesus Christ in your life. And um, open up the gift. To see who Jesus Christ really is. Start a relationship with Jesus Christ. For the rest of your life. Jesus is the answer. Okay. He's the one and only that can save you from the from condemnation for not believing in Jesus Christ, which is uh, in the book of John 3, 16 and 17. If you don't believe in his name, you don't believe in Jesus, we are destined for, for hell and for the lake of fire with the Satan and his angels. So don't be caught without not receiving Jesus in this world because you never know when the end will come, when the last days will come, when uh, all this tribulation will come according to the book of Revelations. The, the, it's getting closer and closer. Many prophets, many men and women of God are dreaming or having visions. God has given me and my wife some visions and promises that the time is near. So I can vouch for that, that it is coming down. But more people, more people will be more blind and they won't understand it. They won't believe it. They'll just be saying many times before in the past, they have cried and cried and cried, cried wolf. But that's part of the tricks of the devil is to make them think that he's not coming, that Jesus is coming. But he is coming. So it's very important right now to really look into your spiritual life and find out what's going on to see if you really have Jesus Christ in you. So I just pray that uh, you will receive Jesus Christ today. And those who do have Jesus, keep on, stay strong, keep the faith, pray for the lost, pray for repentance mm -hmm. and salvation into their lives and that they'll receive the Holy Word and, and uh, receive the truth. All right. So let's uh, be ambassadors of Jesus Christ, representatives of the kingdom. Uh, Lord God, thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord, for um, delivering us this uh, seeds in the people's hearts. I pray that they will plant well and then they, it will grow and be watered and they will sprout. Uh, so what we sow that we can reap, oh Lord, let it be bountiful. Uh, multiple multiple fruit you know for everyone that our cup will run over that we can be able to share it with others god god uh, bless you everyone 
we just praise the Lord for everything you've done. In Jesus' name, I just want to thank him. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Go out there and um, share the word, spread the gospel to every creature, all right? God bless you today. Amen.